Welcome to our lecture online and here we're going to do a more advanced example of Newton's method. And again, Newton's method is a method to find the roots of an equation. And here we have an equation, it's a quadratic equation, x squared minus 4x. It's a parabola, it has two roots, one at 0 and one at x equals 4. So let's pretend we don't know that and we have to find the roots. So let's see if we can find that first root right there where x equals 4. Let's pick uh, our first point to find the root and let's say we pick our first point at x1 and let's make that equal to 5. That means that if we evaluate 5 at, for the function we get a value right there and then if we draw find the slope of that function at that location right there you can see that the slope will come to a point very close to the root maybe not quite at the root but at least that is the methodology to find the root of a, of a function like that. So Newton's method again shows that if you pick a point, x1, you can find the next point which should be closer to the root. So you start with a guess point and then you put that into the equation, Newton's method, and then you find the second point that should be closer to the root and then you use that as an example to find the third point which is even closer to the root and so forth. So here the equation looks like this, x2 equals x1 which is your trial point minus the function evaluated at x1 divided by the, function, the derivative of the function evaluated at x1. So our first point is x1 equals 5, so let's see if we find the root using that method. So the next point, x2, which should be closer to the, to the root than x1, is equal to 5 minus the function evaluated x1. So if I evaluate the function, uh, x equals 5 at 5, here's my function, we get 5 squared minus 4 times 5, so that's 25 minus 20, which is equal to 5. So the function evaluated at 5 is equal to 5 divided by the derivative evaluated at 5. So f prime evaluated at x equals 5 is equal to 2 times 5 minus 4, that's 10 minus 4, which is 6. So the denominator becomes 6. So my next point will be 5 minus 5 sixths. Well, 5 sixths is about uh, 0.833. So we get x sub 2 is equal to 4.16667 out to a number of decimal places. All right, that's my second point. You can see my second point right there will be much closer to the root than my first guess. So 4.16667 or 6667, however many decimal places you want to go out and round it off. All right, so let's use that value as our next point. So now we're going to find our third point, x3 which should be equal to x2 minus the function evaluated at x2 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at x2. At this point, we're probably going to need a calculator. So x3 is going to be x2, which is 4.16667 minus the function evaluated at x2. So f, um, f of x is equal to 4.16667 should equal, well, let's find out. Where's my calculator? Right here. So we take that number squared minus 4 times that number. So 4.16666 squared uh, minus 4 times uh, 4.16666 equals, and we get 0 0.6944. Close enough. So 0 0.6944 and divided by the derivative evaluated at that location. So the derivative evaluated at x equals, so let's write it here. So this we said was 0 0.6944. And the derivative, when x equals 4.16667, is equal to, so now we take the derivative, plug that value in for x and see what we get. So that would be 4, oh, not 4 times, but 2 times 4.16666 uh, minus 4 equals, and we get 4.33333. 4.3333 and if we then figure that out what do we get so take the inverse of that and multiply that times 0.6944 okay so I get uh, this is equal to 4.16667 minus uh, 0.16025 we get something close to four point, oh, let's see here, zero, zero, uh, six, four, two. Close enough. Doesn't have to be that accurate. 
close enough. So now you can see our third point is going to be very close to what our root, we know what our root is, it's four. So you can see how we very quickly zoomed in to the correct value for the root. So x3 is equal to 4.00642. You can continue this methodology, get it more and more accurate, but very soon you'll begin to realize, oh, my first root is going to be 4 because it's in the limit as we keep doing this method we get closer and closer and closer to the actual root I think we're close enough to realize our first root is 4 and so how would we find our second root well we can do that by picking a different point of course we would have to pick a point somewhere smaller than 2 um, and anywhere to the left side it doesn't matter how far we go to the left but we should then pick our second point somewhere to the left and do this method again to find our second root. So if, for example, we pick x equals 1, it wouldn't take very long before we get to the actual root of uh, the root being x equals 0. And that's how we use Newton's method to find the roots of a function like that. In our next example, we'll take an even more complicated example. And again, so we'll show you how very quickly, by going through a series of steps like that, we can very, uh, very quickly zoom into the roots of any function um, no matter how complicated it is. And that's the nice thing about Newton's method.